Oh no, you see what I mean? Oh no! Hey everyone, Henry Yellow here, welcome back. Today we are going to watch Stanley Kubrick's Doctor Strange Love, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. So first of all, thank you all for waiting. You know, just yesterday I got back my voice, and I planned to record yesterday, but then I started having an itchy throat, so I kept coughing and I didn't want that to affect the movie reaction so I decided to rest and wait another day and now I feel so much better the itchiness is mostly gone so it should be perfectly fine and also I you know every time I lose my voice because this isn't the first time but every time I do lose my voice it just makes me feel so much more grateful and it makes me realize how much I miss it because when you lose your voice you can't hum a tune you can't sing a song so every time this happens it just makes me so much more just grateful for my voice. So yeah, yeah, happy to get my voice back and happy to be doing another movie reaction. So thank you all for waiting. Thank you for being patient. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into Dr. Strangelove. It is the stated position of the US Air Force that their safeguards would prevent the occurrence of such events as are depicted in this film. Furthermore, it should be noted that none of the characters portrayed in this film are meant to represent any real persons living or dead. Ominous rumors had been privately circulating among high-level Western leaders. The Soviet Union had been at work on what was darkly hinted to be a doomsday device. Wait, what is that? Are they refueling in midair? Ah, uh, yeah, they are. Can't really tell if this is a. This is probably an actual shot, but this this shot, I'm not sure if it's real or if they're using miniature models to do it. This is General Ripper speaking. Yes, sir. You recognize my voice? I do, sir. Why do you ask? You don't think I'd ask if you recognized my voice unless it was pretty damned important, do you, Mandrake? No, I didn't, sir, no. Peace is our profession. The base is being put on condition red. Just came in on the red phone. My orders are for this base to be sealed tight, and that's what I mean to do. Seal it tight. I want you to transmit plan R, R for Robert, to the wing. I want all privately owned radios to be immediately impounded. They might be used to issue instructions to saboteurs. Mm hmm All right. So there's something brewing. A shooting war. To guard against surprise nuclear attacks, a large force of B-52 bombers airborne 24 hours a day. Nuclear bomb load of 50 megatons, 16 times the total explosive force of all the bombs and shells used by all the armies in World War II. Wow, 24 hours in the air. That's why they had to keep refueling mid-flight. <laughs> Wing attack plan R. Right, R for Robert. And you call this wing attack plan R. R for Romeo. How many times have I told you guys that I don't want no horse around on the airplane? Oh, there's just gotta be something wrong. Wait a second, I'm coming back. Oh, why? What's plan R? Oh, yeah, he had to triple check it. Clearly, it's something super serious. Major Kong, is it possible this is some kind of loyalty test? Old Ripper wouldn't be giving us Plan R unless them Ruskies had already clobbered Washington and a lot of other towns with a sneak attack. Hmm. Boys, I reckon this is it. I just got a cowboy hat. Toe to toe with the Ruskies. Nuclear combat. I want you to remember one thing. The folks back home is counting on you. And by golly, we ain't about to let them down. Let's get this thing on the hook. We got some flying to do. Is this supposed to be a tanning bed? Oh, so that's how it was done. It decoded as wing attack, plan R. Tell him to call, uh, what's his name? Base Commander, Ripper. I have to think of everything on All communications are dead. Right, because they sealed the entire base. No communications in or out. What's cooking on the threat board? Nothing. Nothing at all? So nothing's happening? If there's no threat, then why is General Ripper calling for Plan R? Your commie has no regard for human life. Not even his own. Trust no one. Whatever is uniform or rank. Oh no. Anything that approaches within 200 yards of the perimeter is to be fired upon. What? That's crazy. 
Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. I have always expected the best from you. And you have never given me anything less than that. I mean, what threat did General Ripper see? Or has he gone insane? Because it was only his base who d did all this and apparently there's nothing else happening elsewhere. Here's the attack profile, sir. Everyone has their own roles in each envelope. And should the enemy cannot monitor voice transmission or plant false transmissions which dim to all the receiver circuits. This will block any transmission other than those preceded by a code prefix. Wait, that means that the moment they do that, no one else can change the plan anymore. Code prefix set. Check all the destruct circuits. All the destruct circuits checked. Well, I don't know like all those technical things, but I understand what you're doing. 30 megaton nuclear device fused for air burst at 10,000 feet. Holy, 30 megatons. Well, the plan's been carrying out, and no one can stop it anymore. Music, civilian broadcasting. I think those fellas in the Pentagon are giving us some sort of exercise to test our readiness. Well, let's face it, we, we don't want to start a nuclear war unless we really have to. General Ripper wants to start a nuclear war. Group Captain, the planes are not going to be recalled. If a Russian attack was in progress, we would certainly not be hearing civilian broadcasting. If a Russian attack was not in progress, then your use of plan R, in fact, your orders the entire wing. You're abusing your authority. As an officer in Her Majesty's Air Force, it is my clear duty to issue the recall code upon my own authority and bring back the wing. I'm Prince, I was asked to look for the key and the recall code. I'm the only person who knows the three letter code group. O P E. Do I take it, sir, that you are threatening a bother officer with a gun? And when they realize there is no possibility of recalling the wing, there will be only one course of action open total commitment. But why does he want to do that? War is too important to be left to politicians. I can no longer sit back and allow. Communist infiltration and the international communist conspiracy to sap and impurify our precious bodily fluids. So you think starting a war is the best option? Do you realize how many lives are put at stake because you forced this plan, General Ripper? General Turgeson, what's going on here? General Jack Ripper, the commanding general of... Um... And his name is Jack Ripper, like Jack the Ripper. Planes are fully armed with nuclear weapons with an average load of 40 megatons each. These squares are their secondary targets. The aircraft will begin penetrating Russian radar cover within uh, 25 minutes. They look like all dots to me, not shapes. I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. General Ripper exceeded his authority. Yes, he did. Perhaps you're um, forgetting the provisions of Plan R, sir. Plan R? A lower echelon commander may order nuclear retaliation after a sneak attack if the normal chain of command has been disrupted. You uh, approved it, sir, you must remember. Oh. And the idea was for Plan R to be a sort of uh, retaliatory safeguard. The human element seems to have failed us here. Yeah. To discourage the Ruskies that they could knock out Washington and escape retaliation because of lack of proper command and control. So the safeguard basically came to bite them back in their butts. We're unable to communicate with any of the aircraft. Why? As you may recall, sir, <clears throat> one of the provisions of Plan R provides to prevent the enemy from issuing fake or confusing orders. CRM-114 is designed not to receive at all unless the message is preceded by the correct three-letter code group prefix. So he approved it all. We are plowing through every possible three-letter combination of code. Yeah, how long will that take? It's going to take us about two and a half days to transmit them all. <clears throat> mm -hmm. General Ripper called Strategic Air Command Headquarters shortly after he issued the go code. They are on their way in and no one can bring them back. My boys will give you the best kind of start, 1,400 megatons worth. We will prevail in peace and freedom from fear and in true health through the purity and essence of our natural fluids. Fluids again. So General Ripper's forcing the hands of the upper management of the higher-ups 
When you instituted the human reliability test, you assured me there was no possibility of such a thing ever occurring. I uh, don't think it's quite fair to condemn a whole program because of a single slip-up, sir. Yeah, but that slip-up is going to be 1,400 megatons of nuclear. I told you never to call me here. Don't you know where I am? I deeply respect you as a human being. Someday I'm going to make you Mrs. Buck Turgidson. You, you go back to sleep, huh? But Bucky will be back there just as soon as he can. Really a bad time to call. I want them to enter the base, locate General Ripper, and put him in immediate telephone contact with me. Under condition red, it is standard procedure that the base be sealed off and the base defended by base security troops. Shoot first, ask questions later. My boys can brush them aside without too much trouble. In less than 15 minutes from now, the Ruskies will be making radar contact with the planes. When they do, they're going to strike back with everything they got. If, on the other hand, we were to immediately launch an all-out and coordinated attack. We'd stand a damn good chance of catching them with their pants down. We would therefore prevail and suffer acceptable civilian casualties from the remaining force, which would be badly damaged and uncoordinated. Well, that's exactly what General Ripper wanted to happen. Now, truth is not always a pleasant thing. But it is necessary now to make a choice between two admittedly regrettable, but nevertheless distinguishable post-war environments. Where you got 20 million people killed, where you got 150 million people killed. Mm -hmm. I will not go down in history as the greatest mass murder. Perhaps it might be better, Mr. President, if you were more concerned with the American people than with your image in the history books. Uh, am I to understand the Russian ambassadors to be admitted to entrance to the, the war room? That is correct. He is here on my orders. You see everything. You... That is precisely the idea, General. To show their goodwill. Oh man, it's gonna be a massacre either way. Survival kit contents check. Four days concentrated emergency rations. One miniature combination solution <laughs> phrase book and... A miniature? How do you even read that? $100 in gold. Nine packs of chewing gum. Three lipsticks. Okay, by now it's it's gotta be pulling my leg. I thought it was gonna be like, you know, to show what really is in the survival kit, but clearly they're, they're just joking. What is going on here? I demand an explanation. Lousy commie rat was taking pictures with this thing of the big boar. This clumsy fool attempted to plant that ridiculous camera on me. Oh no, that's gonna be a battle at the base. It's gonna be shoot first, ask questions later. Gee, those trucks sure look like the real thing, don't they? They do look like the real thing. Open up at 200 yards. Ah, oh, it's gonna be a bloodbath. Mm, the defenders at their base would always have an advantage. And they're killing their own people. I'm sure General Ripper counts this as a necessary sacrifice. I think he is drunk. Hello, De Hello Dimitri. I can hear you now, Dimitri. I'm coming through fine too, eh? Well, it's good that you're fine and, and I'm fine. <laughs> We've always talked about the possibility of something going wrong with the bomb. <laughs> it's like he's talking to a child. One of our base commanders, well, he went a little funny in the head. You know, just a little funny. And, uh... He went and did a silly thing. He's sugarcoating everything, sugarcoating the whole thing. How do you think I feel about it? Why do you think I'm calling you? Just to say hello? Of course I like to say hello. Listen, if it wasn't friendly, you probably wouldn't have even got it. Yeah. I if we're unable to recall the planes, then... Then shoot them down? We're just gonna have to help you destroy them, Dimitri. Oh man, the poor people on the plane. I'm very sorry. I am as sorry as you are, Dimitri. Don't say that you're more sorry than I am. We're both sorry, all right? All right. All right. Yeah. I'm you, naturally. They need a translator. Das Vidania. Das Vidania. The mad fools. What's what happened? The doomsday machine. A device which will destroy all human and animal life on Earth. Really, there's such a thing. So plant life will be safe then. Have you ever seen a commie drink a glass of water? On no account will a commie ever drink water? It's really not because of... Water. That's what I'm getting at, water. The fluids. Why do you realize that 70% of you is water? You and I need fresh, pure water to replenish our precious bodily fluids. 
Are you saying they're not humans because they drink vodka instead of water? Have you never wondered why I drink only distilled water? Have you ever heard of a thing called fluoridation? Fluoridation of water? Fluoridation is the most monstrously conceived and dangerous communist plot we have ever had to face. What? The fluoridation of water? Wow, he's lucky. Not a single bullet even grazed him. Wait a minute, those aren't golf clubs. Patrick, pull over here. The raincoats are coming. Come on. Now, where you at, you fool out. So that in 10 months, the surface of the earth will be as dead as the moon. Our study showed even the worst fallout is down to a safe level after two weeks. What? Nuclear doesn't just go on safe levels after two weeks. Jacket them with cabal thorium G, a lethal cloud of radioactivity which will encircle the earth for 93 years. 93 years. The doomsday machine is designed to trigger itself automatically. Surely you can disarm it somehow. Automatically. We're wasting valuable time. Look at the big boy. <laughs> They're getting ready to clown us. <laughs> that was smooth. We could not keep up with the expense involved in the arms race, the space race, and the peace race. Mm. But the deciding factor was when we learned that your country was working along similar lines. We were afraid of a doomsday gap. Dr. Strangelove, do we have anything like that in the works? A moment, please, Mr. President. Dr. Strangelove. How is it possible for this thing to be triggered automatically and at the same time impossible to untrigger? It is not only possible, it is essential. Deterrence is the art of producing in the mind of the enemy the fear to attack. How can it be triggered automatically? A specific and clearly defined set of circumstances under which the bombs are to be exploded can store all the energy. I don't even know what that means. Is he chewing nicotine gum the whole time? Why didn't you tell the world, eh? It was to be announced at the party congress on Monday. Well. Your announcement is too late. General Ripper already set the whole thing in motion. Plan R. Something which the president himself approves and forgot about. No wonder they have that little thing at the beginning where they say that, you know, the Air Force has uh, like precautions in place to prevent this kind of thing from happening. Because I think this is a very, very possibly real scenario that could happen. In a moment of carelessness and mistaken decision making. That barrel must be burning hot. How is he holding on to it? And he's handling the recoil really well. You realize that in addition to fluoridating water, where there are studies underway to fluoridate salt, flour, milk, ice cream. You know when fluoridation first began? 1946. When did you first? develop this theory during the physical act of love huh. Huh. yes I, uh, luckily I, I was able to interpret these feelings correctly loss of essence huh. women sense my power they seek the life essence I do deny them my essence so he's just abstaining from sex basically <laughs> they've surrendered those boys were like my children man yeah and you let your children get killed I'm equally sure they all died thinking of you. Every man, Jack of them. <laughs> Jack. I drink a lot of water, you know. I'm what you might call a water man, Jack. That's what I am. There's nothing wrong with my bodily fluids. Not a thing, Jackie. Were you ever a prisoner of war? No, I was tortured by the Japanese, Jack, if you must know. Not a pretty story. When they tortured you, did you talk? <laughs> I don't think they wanted me to talk. It was just their way of having a bit of fun, the swines. The strange thing is, they make such bloody good cameras. <laughs> I don't know how well I could stand up under torture. Then just give them the code. My advice to you, Jack, is to give me the code now. Yes. I happen to believe in a life after this one. I know I'll have to answer what I've done. I think I can. You better not commit suicide. You it down there. Yes. You know what I'm... Yeah, no, Jack, you can take that for you. I'll take that for you, Jack. Hey, you going to have a little wash and brush up, are you? What a good idea. No, don't leave him alone. I'll try and guess what the code is. <laughs> Oh no, you see what I mean? Oh no, no, they'll never get the code. Damn, he was committed all the way. He'd rather die than give them the codes. It's crazy, man. That level of 
commitment, but why did he have to do that? Looks like a missile tracking us. Commence evasive action right. Missile still tracking steady and closing distance. Well, the missile tracking's apparently very high tech. Deflection oh. increasing, range 8 miles. Missile still deflecting, range 1 mile. Missile detonated. <laughs> Wait, that's ridiculous. I'm sure the radar doesn't, like, show it like that. There's more than one plane, right? There are, like, many, many planes, aren't there? I remember the map showed, like, many planes, not just one. Peace, essence. P -O -E. Oh, O-P-E! Where's General Ripper? He's dead. In the bathroom. <laughs> Got any witnesses? He shot himself. Well, he was shaming, huh? Now look, Colonel. Bat Guano, if that really is your name. <laughs> bat Guano is basically means bat crap. Bat poop. Don't you know that General Ripper went as mad as a bloody March Hare and sent the whole wing to attack the Soviets? What are you talking about? I'm gonna pick up this red telephone, which is connected to SAC. Blast. Shot away, I expect, by one of your men. Right. All right, Charlie, I've been wasting too much time on you. Oh, no. They never even informed the person in charge of the attack on the base about the real Plan R situation. Oh, no. The, they can't even contact them anymore. The whole thing's busted up. It really is too late. I think the auto-destruct mechanism got hit and blew itself up. Oh, it's the auto-destruct mechanism. A rate of fuel loss at approximately 162 per minute, sufficient to take out primary and secondary targets. It's almost like everything is happening to make sure that this plan is carried out. We was flying in the lure while we beat sleigh bells on this thing. <laughs> they dang sure ain't gonna spot us on no radar screen. Oh, okay, they're too low to be spotted on radar now. Colonel, I must know what you think has been going on here. I think you're some kind of deviated prevert. I Pre think General Ripper found out about your preversion. You we're organizing some kind of mutiny of preverts. Now move! What? All I was told to do was get General Ripper on the phone with the President of the United States. I am General Ripper's executive officer. So the President will bloody well want to speak to me, won't he? You want to talk to the President of the United States? I don't want to talk to him, Colonel. I've got to talk to him. He must. And I want you to place an emergency person-to-person -person call with President Merkin Muffley in the Pentagon, Washington, D.C. Merkin Muffley. I'm sorry, I haven't got enough change. Could you make this a collect call operator? They won't accept the call. Have you got 55 cents? Well, you don't think I'd go on a combat with those change in my pocket, do you? Who knows? That Coca-Cola machine. I want you to shoot the lock off it. There may be some change in there. That's private property. Who cares? You have obstructed a telephone call to the President of the United States? Can you imagine? Desperate times call for desperate That's measures. What <laughs> You're gonna have to answer to the Coca-Cola company. <laughs> the recall code is being acknowledged. So all the pl planes stopped except that one plane. Premier Kissoff's calling again and he's hopping mad. Yep, there's that one plane. Fuel flawed active engines and leakage has increased. No, Dimitri, there must be some mistake. He says that one of the planes hasn't turned back. This is headed for the missile complex at Laputa. 30 recalls acknowledged and four splashes, and one of them was targeted for Laputa. He says their air defense now only claims three aircraft confirmed. The fourth may only be damaged. I'm beginning to smell a big, fat, cunny rat. <laughs> Just looking for an excuse to clop us. I mean, if the spaghetti hits the fan now, we're in trouble. The spaghetti hits the fan. You're just gonna have to get that plane, Dimitri. Sorry, they're jamming your radar and flying so low, but they're trained to do it, you know? They're it's... just running low on fuel, and they're damaged. It's not gonna help either one of us if, if, if a doomsday machine goes up, though, is it? There's no point in you getting historical at a moment like this. <laughs> is Dimitri still drunk? Primary target is the Pooter, and its secondary target is Borkov. Put everything you've got into those two sectors, and you can't miss. And now they're rooting for... This plane to go down, which might possibly kill off all the people on board. I estimate we only have 38 minutes flying time, which will not even take us as far as the primary. Okay, they're, they're not... They're gonna have to land before the primary target. We ain't come this far just to dump this thing in the drink. 
What's the nearest target opportunity? Oh no, they're changing targets. Oh my goodness. Things just keep going off. We have a chance to reach target 384. That's the ICBM complex at Port Loss. Alright. Designate new target. No. And now Dimitri is gonna have a argument with the president again. You said they were going to Laputa. Why are they going to Code Loss now? Is there really a chance for that plane to get through? Mr. President, if I may speak freely. <laughs> There's that expression again. Barrel that baby in solo. <laughs> you ought to see it sometime. It's a sight. A big plane like a 52. Room with a frying chicken to the barn. Yeah. <laughs> frying chickens. Has he got a chance? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, he's got a chance. Oh yeah, he's pretty good. Detonator set to zero altitude. Detonator set to zero altitude. Oh, they can adjust that. So it will only explode at altitude zero, is that it? Release second safety. Second safety release. Hmm, they have a lot of procedures in place to before they can launch that bomb and it makes sense. Bomb door circuits. Negative function. Lights red. Uh, emergency power on. Still negative function. Mm -mm. Are they gonna manually open those doors now? I'm going to get them doors open if it airlifts everybody on factory. He's really going to open doors with his own two hands. Hi there, dear John. <laughs> oh, they're actually really big. <laughs> Well, let's hope he doesn't. He isn't able to fix it, and then they don't get to bomb the target. Oh, there it's open. Now he's. How is he gonna get out of there? He's literally sitting on top of the missile. Oh. Oh. Hey, what about Major Kong? They just released him. What the? And he apparently doesn't really mind anyway. He just goes down like a rodeo. Oh no, it's the end of the world. The doomsday device is gonna activate and planet Earth will die. I would not rule out the chance to preserve a nucleus of human specimens. Radioactivity would never penetrate a mine some thousands of feet deep. How long would you have to stay down there? 93 years. Is this supposed to be a fake hen? 100 years? People could actually stay down there for 100 years? It's not like they have a choice. Call him the Fuhrer. They transitioned past that scene so fast, you know, when Major Kong ride, rode a freaking nuclear bomb. Of course it would be absolutely vital that our top government be included, foster and impart the required principles of leadership and tradition. <laughs> His hand just keeps wanting to salute, isn't it? <laughs> what is going on here? His hand has a mind of his own. Bro, someone stop his hand choking him. Since each man will be required to do prodigious mating, the women will have to be selected for their sexual characteristics. You have an astonishingly good <laughs> idea there, Doctor. Of course, they'll agree. Supposing the Ruskies stashed away some big bomb, see, and we didn't. When they come out in a hundred years, they could take over. We might even try an immediate sneak attack so they could take over our mine shaft space. Bro, it's about the survival of humankind right now. To prevent them from taking over other mine shafts, please. And yeah, he's taking pictures. Mr. President, we must not allow a mine shaft <laughs> gap. Now it becomes a mine shaft gap. Before that, it was a doomsday gap. You can walk. Monsieur, I can walk. Congrats. Even though the entire world is destroyed, they're still thinking about, you know, getting ahead of the the other country. So no matter what happens, there's always this inner conflict to not be one-upped by the rival. Tell them I won't be long. Ooh, that really looks like a like a rising sun. So beautiful and yet so destructive. Some sunny day. It really does look like the sun you know, rising from clouds. Doctor Strangelove. Well, apparently Doctor Strangelove is an actual character in the movie. I did wonder why it was called Doctor Strangelove. Also, now I can understand why at the begin beginning of the movie they showed the uh, little words there which mentioned about 
the Air Force has preventive measures to prevent this kind of things happening because I feel like these kind of things are possible. You know, it's totally possible for this to happen. The higher ups approve a plan R, which allows for a lower ranked officer to initiate the plan and then make it impossible for anyone else to recall the plan. And then for this general Jack the Ripper, his name is literally Jack Ripper. So Jack the Ripper, uh, I don't know. I think he is going too far with this. And he thinks that just by doing this, bombing this whole place and just dropping 1400 megatons of nuclear on their enemies, he thinks that that will solve the problem. He thinks that is a ne necessary sacrifice for a nuclear war to happen. But I think he just doesn't think far ahead enough. All he wants is just to destroy his enemies and that's it. But he doesn't think about what kind of effects that nuclear fallout would have or how many lives would suffer. Like 150 million people did. And then how would the economy suffer? Like there's just so many things to take into account and all he wants is to just one up the the Russians, the Soviet Union. So I sincerely hope that whether it's the government or the Air Force or the military or the Navy, whatever, I really do hope that they have preventive measures to stop these kind of things from happening ever. And the things that General Ripper mentioned, such as the fluoridation of water, that sounds very familiar. I mean, don't we... I mean, we filter water, we distill water. Do we fluoridate water? Yeah, let me just check this out for a bit. Fluoride helps to rebuild and strengthen the tooth surface or animal. Enamel. Enamel. Water fluoridation prevents tooth decay by providing frequent and consistent contact with low levels of fluoride. By keeping the tooth strong and solid, fluoride stops cavities from forming and can even rebuild the tooth surface. Um, I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. Fluoride in drinking water has greatly improved the dental health of American and Canadian consumers. Early studies suggesting that fluoride was a possible cancer-causing chemical proved to be incorrect. Fluoride is naturally found in fresh water. Water fluoridation is the controlled adjustment of fluoride to a public water supply solely to reduce tooth decay. So they add a little bit of fluoride to the water supply and we drink it and it is supposed to help us improve our dental health and prevent tooth decay. That's interesting. In 1945, Grand Rapids became the first city in the world to fluoridate its drinking water. Well, clearly, the fluoridation of water is not a communist cons conspiracy theory like General Ripper thought. Pretty sure they were just trying to make a joke out of it, probably. And the last thing I want to check out is the cobalt Thorium G. In Doctor Strange Love, the Doomsday device nuclear devices were salted using cobalt thorium G. This is a fictional element, so it is not a real thing. But a cobalt bomb, which is a real thing, is a, is a type of salted bomb, a nuclear weapon designed to produce enhanced amount of radioactive fallout intended to contaminate a large area with radioactive material. One thing I wondered though, I wonder how long it took for the crew on the plane to realize that Major Kong went down with the bomb. <laughs> They're gonna go down there, realize the doors are open, one bomb is gone, but Major Kong isn't there. And they're gonna be like, oh, we killed Major Kong by dropping the bomb while he was sitting on it. And Major Kong wasn't even sad or upset, he was like, like riding a riding a bull on the rodeo and he's just waving his hat around like yeah i'm going down with a nuclear bomb but sadly uh there was no actual crisis happening it was just general ripper being a little funny in the head and doing a silly thing i feel like the plot the entire story itself was pretty all right but i feel like it rather than the movie being made for enjoyment or entertainment it's probably more being a movie made for awareness you know to be aware of uh 
these kind of possibilities and maybe also telling the government and the higher ups to be careful with the plans that they approve as for the characters though i think the the character which makes the most impact will probably be general ripper you know because he is just so committed towards this his own belief and his idea of wanting to start a nuclear war of the russians that he would be willing to sacrifice his life for it and that is a commitment that not many people can make to sacrifice their life for their ideals and then it's followed closely by i think the second best character in the movie uh, would be general turgidson wait i think jack ripper wasn't a general but i can't remember what his rank was but the general turgidson uh, you can tell he was really into his character, the way he gets excited, and then the way his expression changes. Like he's really good with the expressions and all that, and that's why I think he is also uh, great at playing his character. What did you think about this movie when you first watched it? Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.